So, I want to tell you a story that involves greed, shifting meta, and a lot of twists and turns. Maybe by now you've heard that Risley is getting a pretty lukewarm reception, with the general consensus being that he is okay at C0 and pretty good at C1. Indeed, it's not the first time we're hearing about this. History is repeating itself yet again. C1 Hu Tao, C2 Raiden, C2 Kujo Sara, and quite a few more have gone through this exact same situation. And in this video, I want to talk about all of these things. I want to show you the exact difference between C0 and C1 Risley, and I also want to compare him to units like C1 Hu Tao and few more and answer the question, just how much more greedier his situation is compared to other unit constellations. Most importantly, is Risley just simply mid at C0? But it's all okay because he looks cool and that's what matters the most? Well, you might be surprised by the conclusion at the end. But first... This video is sponsored by Dungeon Hunter 6, a new game in the Dungeon Hunter franchise since 2015 and, as a longtime fan, I'm so glad this game is finally out. Dungeon Hunter 6 is a free-to-play mobile action RPG set in a beautiful fantasy world with a unique hero collector feature. The gameplay is fast-paced, packed with a hack-and-slash goodness, and there's various builds and skills that you can utilize when fighting big bad bosses. And it's absolutely free, just use my link in the description or scan the QR code if you're watching on PC. Now, normally, you just kill a boss, right? Well here, it's only the beginning. Any boss you defeat, you can actually loot it, ride it as a mount, or even fly them. But what's even better, you can summon up to three of the bosses who will follow and fight with you anywhere, and perform combo skills. You can even shapeshift into them and unleash ultimate power. With over 100 uniquely designed bosses, the gameplay options are endless. There's also a guild system you can join to engage in guild wars, or you can trade your loot in an auction house. But the best part, you can grind with a ton of different skill tree options and test out the best builds. So make sure to download Dungeon Hunter 6 by using my link in the description or scan the QR code if you're watching on PC and get a special starter pack worth $50 which includes 10 summons, 1 SSR, Lieutenant Demonic Wolf and an accessory pack. And use your game account to launch the lucky spin for a chance to win awesome prizes like iPhone 15, PS5, Apple Watch and more. So help support my channel and download Dungeon Hunter 6. So the biggest controversy about Risley right now is that his first passive works in a really clunky way. Because he loses a lot of health by just doing normal attacks with his skill, when he is below 60% HP and uses a charge attack, it will heal him for 30% HP, the attack won't cost stamina, and it will deal more damage. Now the reason why it's clunky has to do with a long cooldown, which is 5 seconds, and the fact that when using him in a team with healers like Benny, it's actually pretty hard to trigger it, since falling below 60% HP will mostly happen if Risley gets hit by the enemy. Now, in order to understand what kind of impact C1 has on his gameplay, I've recorded a bunch of his C0 footage and now I will activate his C1 so we can observe the difference. When enabled, the first constellation makes changes to his first passive and when Risley does his full 5 hit normal attack combo, he can follow it up with a charge attack that will gain all the benefits of the first passive. Not only that, but the damage becomes way bigger and even increases his skills duration by extra 4 seconds. More importantly, this passive now has only 2.5 instead of 5 second cooldown. If I go to my first team, which is Reverse Melt with Shenha, I immediately noticed two big changes. First, Benny overhealing Risley no longer matters. I can easily hit with a charge attack by just doing 5 normal attacks, or otherwise known as N5C combo. Next, the damage from the charge attack is way bigger. Previously, at C0, I could hit for 119,000 damage with his charge attack, now he just hit for 227,000, which is pretty insane. So with this team, the biggest takeaway is that the melt damage with charge attacks is way better, and it's now extremely extremely easy to trigger the first pass without mining that annoying below 60% HP requirement by just doing his N5C combo. Next, I was really interested to see how he works without a healer and instead he relies on his first pass of his healing. In a burgeon comp with Toma, here Risley doesn't really melt at all and he acts more as a driver. For this team, Xing Cho is the only one who provides a bit of healing from his rain swords and I often found myself struggling at C0 to keep Risley above 50% HP because one other annoying thing about his skill is that it actually loses the multiplier while active if he is not above 50% HP. Well, now with C1, it's so much easier by just again spamming the N5C combo and gaining those heals from his first passive, triggering pretty much every time because it takes about 3 seconds to finish the whole N5C combo and with the 2.5 second cooldown for the first passive thanks to C1, even with some extra attack speed, he can literally heal himself with every single charge attack. This is huge in terms of sustaining himself, like it's a vast difference compared to his survivability at C0. Obviously, he could get into 
interrupted and failed to finish the N5C combo. But at least in this team, it's very unlikely, because Xingqiu provides resistance to interruption, while Toma's shield, even if paper thin, can still absorb one hit with leftover damage and still prevent Risley from getting knocked away. So while in this team, Risley's personal damage isn't that big of a deal, the sustainability goes through the roof at C1 compared to C0. And these two observations at C1 basically reveal to me that his charge attack damage is way better for melt comps and his sustainability thanks to constant healing from N5C combo allows him to maintain his skills multiplier way easier and he can even get away with some things like dropping a healer from a team. For example, in a mono cryo comp, running him with Mika, Diona was a pretty logical thing to do at C0, but now with C1, I can even go for a more aggressive version and include Rosaria instead, which boosts the team's overall damage output. Same goes with Hyper Fridge. Previously, when low on health, I had to blindly spam his charge attack, hoping it will finally heal him with that long 5 second cooldown because he would fall below 50% so often it wasn't even funny. Now he just heals himself whenever I finish N5C, which is just music to my ears. All in all, I would say that C1 gives Risley a huge quality of life improvement. Honestly, the extra damage he gains for charge attack is nice, but if you play him right and know the enemy's attack patterns well enough, the difference in time it takes to finish an Abyss Chamber isn't that huge, and I would put more emphasis on the constant healing he gets from C1 thanks to the N5C spamming. Like, it's clear this constellation is packed with a ton of value, but I started to wonder, is the game getting too greedy or have this already happened with other characters in the past? Well, I went ahead and investigated this, so let's talk about it. I actually wrote down a pretty big list of characters that allegedly gain a ton of value from their first or second constellation. And the first one I want to start with would be Hu Tao. It's no secret, anytime you start a conversation about her, the inevitable C1 talking point creeps in. For her, the ability to no longer consume stamina with her charge attacks is huge, which means she can fit more charge attacks into her DPS rotation and makes her feel much better to play. Now, you can do jump cancels, but they are supposedly harder to execute, can be slower, and leaves her exposed to enemy attacks. Keep in mind, she still drains stamina for doing a dash cancel after her charge attack, so in reality, C1 means she doesn't consume stamina when she charge attacks. Now, I'll admit it, I am biased when it comes to evaluating her C0 and C1 differences because I've had her at C1 for a long time now, although it's pretty clear that while C1 gives a strong improvement for her, it's not as value-packed as Risley's C1. For Hu Tao, C1 in plain terms mostly allows her to dish out better DPS. In Risley's case, he gains a better sustainability thanks to constant healing and along with it better damage he obtains from charge attacks, although unlike Hu Tao, they do not make up the majority of his damage output. But then I thought, despite everything I just mentioned, Risley's C1 also lifts that annoying restriction imposed on him, where he needs to hover below 60% HP if he wants to use his enhanced charge attack. And so, which other units had annoying restrictions that got fixed with an extra constellation? Well, it turns out, plenty. C2 Kujosara fixes her skills deployment for buffing, C1 on Benny removes the health capping for the burst attacks boost, C1 Sucrose creates more swirls and is crucial for fixing her energy generation, and same goes for C1 Shenha, who struggles with energy issues in various rotations. Heck, even Sayu, who is more or less a unit designed for world exploration, now allows her burst to both heal and attack at C1. Obviously, the amount of effort it takes to C1 a 4 star compared to 5 star is vastly different, but my point here is that Hoyo's been doing this for a long time now. We've also seen how C1 for a 5 star is also negligible, like Ayaka's first constellation, which many consider to be a useless upgrade, or the infamous triple arrow shot with Venti. And let's be honest, we rarely see a good balanced C1 on a 5 star, but some that come to mind would be Kazuha's C1 that has its own pros and cons, but overall a decent upgrade to him. Same goes for C1 Nahida. The boost it provides can vary from useless to pretty helpful, and it's also one step closer to her second constellation, which is amazing for dungeon reactions. All in all, compared to all the previous characters released so far, Risley's C1 definitely borders on the greedy side, but this is not the first time it has happened. However, one question still pops into my mind. Is he actually bad without C1? Honestly, no. I don't think Risley is that bad without C1, and I'm speaking about this from the perspective of his performance in The Abyss. In open world, C1 is a nice but a small thing you'll notice. In The Abyss, it clearly gives him superior survivability, something that in my opinion should have been built into him at C0, just like with Nouvellet, who can easily self-heal himself. Yeah, the damage increase for his charge attack is nice and makes up for some cute big numbers he can put out, but the fact that he can heal himself and not consume stamina and repeat this every N5C combo can be huge in many teams where you just don't want to use a dedicated healer. And even with a strong healer, he can then ignore that stupid 60% HP threshold requirement. 
But the thing is, I've ran a lot of different teams with him at C0, and then the same teams and loadouts at C1, and I've noticed that clear times don't differ that much. Like, at best, it will be about 3 to 5 seconds sooner, but it really depends how well you know the enemy's attack patterns, or if they have RNG logic that forces you to improvise. I think for the most part, his damage output at C1 compared to C0 varies. In melt comps, you will definitely notice a better output, but for many other teams where he doesn't melt, the biggest thing will be his self-sustainability. And you might argue that because he loses enhanced attacks if he falls below 50% HP, the constant healing he gets from N5C combo means he can be a more reliable damage dealer. And to some extent, I can agree with that, but at the end of the day, it will vary from player to player and team comp to team comp. Ultimately, I would say that Yes, his C1 upgrade is definitely a greedy move here. It makes him feel much more comfortable to play, which I think it's not something I see often discussed in the community. And compared to previously released characters, it is by far one of the best C1s in the game in terms of improving characters' potential. But should you get it if you already have Risley? Uh, hard to answer because I don't know what other characters you have or want to have. With Furina on the horizon and many other cool Fontaine characters that are yet to be released, I don't think it's worth getting his C1, especially if you're a light spender or a free-to-play person who meticulously collects every primo gem. Worst case scenario, just wait for his rerun banner and then decide if you still enjoy playing him and want that extra power and healing from C1. Keep in mind that C0 Risley at the end of the day is just a decent damage dealer in terms of Abyss performance. So even if you get his C1, don't expect him to be this Rockstar damage dealer. Although I need to pick my words carefully about Rockstar damage dealers, but anyway, point is, while it's sad that a great part of his kit is locked away behind C1, if you like him, you'll eventually want to get this constellation, but even without it, he is a decent damage dealer at best, and I for once think that just because the game is luring you with a great promise, doesn't mean we should take the bait and just pull for an extra copy. Of course, none of it matters if you haven't even pulled for him at all, but hey, now you know what's all the buzz about C1 Risley. Anyway, thanks for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it, and I would appreciate it if you could press the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks again, and see you next time.